Hey everybody, today we're gonna get stacked. That is not a term that people use. Hey David, how does macro photo stacking work? Okay, so there's a lot of really good um, technique tutorials on this subject out there. So I'm not gonna go into tons of depth about it. I'll tell you the general concept. And the general concept is that when you have a macro subject, like this one over here, your depth of field gets very shallow. Basically, you can make any lens a macro lens by moving it further and further away from your image media. That's why most lenses, if you notice when they focus, most prime lenses, when you focus them, the, the back element moves further away from the image media. That's not true on all lenses, but as a, as a general rule of thumb, you can look at your primes and notice that. So the further the lens gets from the image media, the more the, the image is enlarged to the point that you can eventually get up to one-to-one -one or further if your lens can handle it, not all of them can. The trade-off to enlarging is that you get a narrower depth of field. That's why if you look at the depth of field scales on your lenses, you'll notice that at f16, you can set infinity over here at f16 on this side and have it be seven feet, let's say, on the other side. And looking at your depth of field scales, everything from seven feet to infinity, therefore, would be in focus. But if you take the seven feet and you move it over here and it goes from seven feet down to five, why isn't it seven feet to negative infinity? As you move your lens away from your image media, the depth of field gets shallower just as a function of lens optics and the way light works. So back in the just film days, the only way to really overcome that was to have a stupidly tiny aperture, which led to diffraction-related softness. So really good macros from the film days were usually medium and large format where the diffraction-related softness could be minimized. So focus stacking seeks to use a digital solution to a physics-based problem. And the idea is that if your lens is sharpest at f5.6 or f8, you still have a shallow depth of field, but it's better than at f1.4 or f2. So, so you set your lens down to a medium aperture instead of going all the way to, to f32 or f45. And then you focus, take a picture, move your camera, take a picture, move and move and move. With macro stacking, you don't want to refocus your camera. You want to actually have a physical camera slider on your tripod that you can adjust in increments, preferably with a uh, screw-based drive, so that you can move your camera. If you refocus, you change the magnification on your image and you will screw up or risk screwing up your macro stacking. So if you're going to try macro stacking, you want to make sure that to focus on a different plane on your macro subject, that you are physically moving the camera in a very precise path in line with the orientation of your subject to the best extent possible. Once you've taken all of these pictures, it could be 20, it could be 10,000 if you can actually process 10,000 on your computer. I'm pretty jealous of your computer, full disclosure. But once you've gotten all of these, however many you take, you can edit them in a number of different softwares. There's some out there for photo stacking that are free. You might be able to do it with those. Since I use Photoshop Creative Suite 6, it's got the ability to take all of those photos, align them, and pick the sharpest pixels off each layer and combine those into a finished product. And that's the way you wanna edit them in digital, in digital post, is you want to have all of the images aligned in your editor and then have it automatically pick the sharpest areas. Another reason when you're taking them to move the camera in and out instead of refocusing is that that will make it easier for your computer, uh, for your digital software to align everything in post. And that's the process. There's a, it is a really awesome process. There's a lot to it, a lot more than this video is covered. It takes a lot of practice to really nail it. Um, but the results, when they turn out, are really stunning. It's, 
it's a pretty fantastic technique to use, yes.